Welcome back class to chapter 17, Diagnostic Electrocardiography, lecture part two. Today we will talk about causes for determination of a test. The stress test should be immediately stopped if any of the following occur. ST segment elevation. This indicates severe myocardial ischemia and injury. The sudden development of ST segment elevation is an ominous sign. Continuing the test could result in irreversible cardiac damage. Sustained ventricular tachycardia. Cardiac arrest could result if the test is not stopped and a patient can experience VTAC if showing signs of ventricular tachycardia. Moderate to severe chest pains, especially accompanied by ST segment depression or elevation. Mild chest pain unaccompanied by ST segment changes may not be indicative of significant cardiary artery disease. But if the patient is experiencing more severe chest pain, especially that associated by ST segment changes, it is more reflective of significant disease. Drop in blood pressure more than 10 mmHg, along with other evidence of ischemia such as chest pain or ST segment depression or elevation. The blood pressure usually rises in response to exercise, which is a give me. A sudden drop in blood pressure can indicate pump failure, meaning the heart is not pumping a sufficient amount of blood to the patient. Therefore, the more they're working out, the more stress it causes the patient or their blood pressure to drop. Technical problems from monitoring system are the treadmill. As you know, before we put a patient on a treadmill or hook them up to the EKG machine or anything of that significant, we first have to do a diagnostic check to make sure everything is working properly. Now, it is technical, things do happen. So if for every reason you have technical issues or technical problems, you are to cease the test at that particular time and fix whatever errors is going on and try to resume the test if possible. <clears throat> Patients request to stop. Before stopping, ask why the patient wants to stop the test. If they're just experiencing fatigue, are they just being on the little lazy side? Um, are they just don't want to do the test? We have to ask them certain pinpoint questions as to why they would want to stop the test. Now, if a patient is experiencing dizziness, or begins to stumble on their feet, or they feel faint, or you look at their physical appearance and they look pale, they look clammy, eyes are kind of dilated, then that would be signs to say to stop the test. Um, patient becomes diaphoretic. This is a sign of decreased cardiac output. The patient is not tolerating the test very well, so we have to proceed and terminate the test. How do we interpret stress testing? The following EKG changes are normal on a stress test when we do one. Shortened PR intervals, which associate to AV conduction and the heart rate usually accelerating with exertion, meaning the more you work out, the shorter your PR interval is because the more your heart has to pump out and produce blood and oxygen throughout the body. You might also experience or see tall P waves. This is often a result of the increased lung capacity, meaning the more you work out, the more air your lungs are, should I say, the bigger your lungs fill up with air to get more blood flow into your heart. Increased heart rate, which is shortened R to R intervals. The ability of the heart rate to increase with exercise is known as chromiotopic reserve. Heart rate does, that does not increase with stress is chromiotopic incompliance. Normal signs and symptoms of a patient going through a stress test. 
you will see signs of decreased systematic ventricular restrictions due to vasodilation. Exercise causes blood vessels to dilate. As we all know, they get smaller because you're excerting or you're working out. Lowering the resistance to the outflow of blood from the heart and increasing cardiac output. Increased respiratory rate. Exercise causes increased oxygen demand, so the respiratory rate increases to allow more oxygen intake. Sweating. Muscle cramps and calves and sides. This is a common phenomenon in exercise and does not imply poor myocardial um, functions. It's just that sometimes patients who don't really work out or don't exercise other than within the normal means of everyday walking or moving around, so usually when they experience a stress test, they suffer from mild muscle cramping in the calves or in the side due to the extreme exercise that their body is being put through, especially if they're not used to exercising to this point. Um, increased blood pressure. The ability of blood pressure to rise with exercise is known as enotopic reserve. Blood pressure that does not rise with exercise can be applied as neotropic in compliance. J-point depression is another thing you'll see on um, as a sign and symptoms of a normal EK, uh, stress test. Sorry, J-point depression. The J-point is the point at which the QRS joins the ST segment. The J-point depression means the ST segment takes off before the QRS complex has gotten up to the baseline. And if you turn to figure 17.3, where it shows a picture of J-point depression, as you can see, just when your QRS and just before uh, you have a short S, your J-point mix, and then you have your S, uh, your T-wave. What are indications of a positive stress test? Well, a positive stress test is um, the following would indicate a, a positive stress test, or in other words, a abnormal stress test. Positive means bad, negative means good. So if you have a positive stress test, it's due to the fact that you have seen on their EKG reading that they take during their stress testing that they have had ST segment depressions greater than or equal to 1.0 to 1.5 mMs. That does not return back to the baseline within 0.08 seconds, which is two little blocks after the J point. ST depression can be a, of three different types. You have upsloping, horizontal, and downsloping. In terms of cardiac implication, upsloping is the least indicative of cardiac artery disease. Horizontal is immediate, meaning it's not bad, but it's not good. It's just eh, in the middle. But if you see downsloping, it is the most indicative of CAD. On figure 17.4 is just the different types of ST depression that you might see on an EKG reading of a patient who is doing a stress test. As you can see, upward sloping, your ST segment is kind of on that upward slope, where horizontal, it kind of looks like it's almost on baseline or kind of below baseline. And then if you have downward sloping, that's maybe signs of CAD. On figure 17.5, you have pre-exercise resting EKG, because remember, we have to do a resting EKG before we hook the patient up to the um, stress, the treadmill. And then we have to take one during the time they're doing the stress testing on the treadmill. So this is a picture of a 
pre-exercise resting EKG, meaning before we even put them on the EKG. And as you can see, their ST segments are within normal normalcy. While taking the ST, you see some slight variations that are going on. In AVF, you see there is a downward sloping ST segment followed by an inverted T wave. And that infamous um, inverted U, which we'll talk about in a few more minutes. <clears throat> Take a look also in um, V2, you have a upward sloping ST segment. In L2, you have a downward three down. For uh, leap one, also you have a downward sloping. So that's showing some signs of some CAD in some of these leads. So that one of the coronary arteries is showing some distress or some blockage. Another thing we look for as to indicate if we have a positive stress test or not is U-wave inversion or new appearances of U-waves. Although a much less common phenomenon than the ST segment changes is the appearance of a U-wave because as you know, all this time we look at EKG strips all throughout this chapter one through 14, we hardly ever seen any U-waves whatsoever. Yeah, we talked about a U-wave, and how they come in and what causes them to come in. But if you start to see them when you're giving a patient a stress testing, an exercise stress test, that can be indications of um, coronary ischemia. Uh, of course, as you know, with ST elevation, the elevation of the ST segment is an indication of considerable transmutal myocardial ischemia progressing to injury phase. We would stop the stress test immediately to prevent any other tissue damage or to cause it to go into the injury phase. If it's ischemic, it can recover. If it's injury, it can also recover. We just don't want it to go to infarct. But if we know it's in ischemia, it's a better viable chance of faster recovery time than if it goes to injury. All right, this is an example on figure 17.7 of inverted U waves that have suddenly appeared as indicated by the dots that are placed under the U. As we said before, U waves show signs of coronary ischemia. So the sudden appearance of the U waves on an EKG reading of a patient who's on an exercise stress test will give us indications that they have some kind of CAD. Reliability of stress tests. How reliable are stress tests in diagnosing coronary artery disease? The viability of stress test results can be absolutely determined only by an angiogram. Just because the patient may show signs of CAD, we can't, the doctor can't confirm it until he order, orders an angiogram to go along with that stress test result. And basically, an angiogram is a procedure in which dye is injected into the coronary arteries to determine if there is indeed CAD. For the, EK, for the stress EKG to show any diagnostic change that indicates CAD, the coronary artery in question must be at least 75% narrow. To so better understand the reliability of stress of test results, it is necessary to understand the terms sensitivity and passivity. Sensitivity refers to the percentage of patients who have a positive stress test and CAD is proven by angiogram, whereas passivity refers to the percentage of patients who have negative or normal stress tests and normal coronary arteries as proven by an angiogram. Thus, the term positive refers to the test sensitivity, 
and negative refers to specificity. Categories of stress test results. Once we have acquired a stress test and the angiogram, this is the categories that it is placed into. So stress test results fall into four different categories. You have your true positive. Basically what this is, is that your stress test is positive, showing indications of CAD, and the angiogram is also positive, confirming that the patient has CAD. Then you have false positive which where your stress test may be positive for CAD, but your angiogram says it's negative, resulting in a normal coronary artery. Then you have your true negative. The stress test and angiogram are both negative for CAD, meaning the patient has no signs of CAD, so the problems with their heart might have something, other issues that the doctor has to diagnose and figure out. Then you have false negative. It's where the stress test may be negative, but the angiogram comes back saying you're positive for CAD. And then you have Bry's theorem. Bry's theorem just suggests that the true predictivity value of any test is not just in the accuracy, meaning the sensitivity or specificity of the test itself, but also in the patient's probability of disease as determined before the test is done. Basically what we do, a physician will assess the patient's history, heredity, and administer a physical exam before even scheduling or giving the patient a stress test to see if there's any likelihood of them having CAD. And if they show that they do, then they'll schedule a stress test for that patient. <laughs> After the stress test is done and completed, when the patient has completed the stress test, monitoring will continue during a cooling off period. Because once you pump up your heart, you just can't say hop off of a machine. You have to give your heart time to recover, to get back to some normalcy. So during that cool down period, which can last anywhere from six to 15 minutes, depending on the protocol that was set for that particular patient or by the, uh, by the physician for that particular patient, should I say? Uh, and depending on the results of the stress test itself to see if there was any EKG changes, heart rate changes, changes in oxygen consumption, their blood pressure, the physician would then turn around and schedule an angiogram to follow up to determine if the patient has CAD. If, for whatever reason, the test is negative, then there may be no treatment indicated at that specific time by the physician, but he will, if the patient does experience some type of heart problems or some other symptoms, uh, he will do further research and schedule another appointment for the patient. After the stress test has been completed and the patient has cooled down, these are instructions that we have to give to the patient once we have unhooked them, took off the blood pressure cup, took off the EKG electrodes, make sure they're comfortable. Um, we can give them some hydration because they're probably not going to attend thirsty, but the only thing we can give them is water. While this is all going on, we give them instructions that need to be followed for them once we have released them from the stress test. And the number one thing we have to do is make sure we tell them that they rest for several hours before doing any other activity for that day. They are to avoid extreme temperature changes. They are to avoid stimulants such as caffeine, tobacco, or alcohol for at least three hours after performing a stress test. They are not to take a hot shower or bath for at least two hours. When to expect the test results from the doctor, because the doctor is going to give us instructions on what to tell the patient at the time, at the conclusion of the stress test. So we basically reinforce what the doctor says or, and tell them that the doctor will schedule another appointment for any further testing if indicated. And the last thing we have to do is the results should only be if the patient, sometimes patients get impatient, <laughs> patient gets impatient, 
Uh, sometimes they want to ask you 50 million questions because you are the EKG tech. You are the person who is giving them the stress test and who is monitoring them and who is making sure that everything runs smoothly. They sometimes tend to ask you the diagnosis of it. So basically what we tell the patient is that the results will be discussed with the physician at the time that the physician has set the appointment for or has started treatment if the patient does have positive for CAD. And we would also tell the patient that, um, that the doctor has scheduled a specific time even if they don't show signs of CAD to further discuss the results that we are not allowed to make any diagnosis because we are not doctors, we are EKG techs and we monitor patients while they're on the EKG machine. We are not allowed to make diagnosis or to make any scientific discoveries on the patient's health. We are just there to monitor, report, and comfort the patient the best way we can. Well, this concludes our lecture for stress testing on chapter 17. If you have any questions or comments, you can either message me or text me. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye.